Three Kings came. Three Kings came, searching for heaven's king, guided by heaven's light to God's gift of love. Three Kings came from a faraway land, but the one that they sought had come much further than they. A star announced the king had come, and their hearts were ablaze with desire to honor him and present their treasured things. They bowed, they worshiped, and adored, but their amazement overcame. When Mary told them that the child was the Son of God who came, three kings came, never to be the same, for they met the one in whom God fully dwells, three kings came. Showing to you and I that it is Jesus Christ, wise men see. A star announced the King had come, and their hearts were ablaze with desire to honor Him and present their treasure things. They bowed, they worshipped, and adored, but their amazement overcame. When Mary told them that the child was the Son of God who came. Amen. Three kings came. Three kings came, searching for heaven's king, guided by heaven's light to God's gift of love. Three kings came from a faraway land, but the one they sought had come much further than they. A star announced the king had come, and their hearts were ablaze. They met the one in whom God fully dwells. Three kings came, showing to you and I that it's Jesus Christ, wise men see. They bowed, they worshiped, and adored, but their amazement overcame when Mary told them. God bless you. Shall we look to the Lord? Our God and our Father, we thank you for this Advent season to remember the coming into the world of our blessed Lord Jesus and the love of God demonstrated there. Thank you for this new year also that is now upon us. And we pray as we open your word that you might help us to see how we might live more wholeheartedly for thee this year. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I thought we would look in Matthew chapter 2. And uh, look at the wise men, the Magi, because they give us a great, incredible example of how we should approach this new year and really uh, every day of our lives, every new day of our lives. So we'll look in Matthew chapter 2, Matthew 2. Uh, begin reading in Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, 
and are come to worship him. So this is quite wonderful. These uh, Gentile kings uh, come from uh, what we believe was Babylon. Uh, you remember that uh, Israel had been captive in Babylon, and many of the people had stayed even after the 70 years were up and Ezra and Nehemiah returned, that they had stayed in Babylon. So Babylon had the word of God, the Old Testament, and prophecies connected with the Lord's coming. And uh, so it uh, might have been, uh, even in their reading of Numbers 24 and 17, uh, where it speaks of a star coming out of Jacob and a, a scepter shall rise out of Israel, that they uh, determined that the king of the Jews was born. They said, we've seen his star in the east. Now, we believe he, they saw his star uh, the uh, night that he was born. The star appeared then. So the wise men were not present in Bethlehem at the manger scene, uh, as is commonly depicted. We, most of us are aware of that. But um, we find in the book of Ezra that it was a three-month journey uh, to go from Babylon to Jerusalem. Now, uh, when the star appeared to these um, uh, magi, these chief men, we're not sure exactly uh, what that meant. Uh, you know, was it an angel? Was it some heavenly scene? But uh, remember, uh, these are Gentiles that studied the heavens. And in the time of uh, Hezekiah, when he had, uh, um, God had shown him a miracle about uh, the fact he would live another 15 years and he brought the sundial back. Those in Babylon knew of this great wonder. We read that in the Old Testament. Uh, they, they, they were watching and they understood this great thing that had happened and they went to Hezekiah. So uh, God speaks to people. This is the point. God speaks to people in, your own lang in their own language. He approaches them right where they are. He doesn't call us to uh, change ourselves and then, then come to him. He meets us right where we are. You know, if, if, if we've uh, lost uh, our, our way and, and living in immorality, well, he meets uh, uh, us at a well. Uh, uh, you know, he meets men and women where they are. Praise the Lord. I mean, he's, he's Emmanuel came to be with us, with sinners. Praise the name, praise his name, and also of course, to forgive us our sins. His name is Jesus. So these magi come, and, uh, the, and they come to Jerusalem. They say, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We've seen a star in the east. Why did they come? To worship him. Now, this next verse is incredible. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. We can understand uh, that when these magi came in, it wasn't three. It was probably maybe 300. I mean, these are uh, wealthy, prominent men from the East. They came with treasure. Uh, they had come uh, this long journey uh, that was a minimum of three months, but then they had to determine uh, after they saw the star what the meaning was. Uh, they had to make preparations. So we believe that it was at least a, a year later uh, that uh, the Magi appeared. At that time, we'll see the Lord Jesus was living in a home and uh, Herod killed, uh, Herod first inquired diligently of the wise men when they saw the star, and he killed all the male children in Bethlehem, two years old and younger. So uh, we, we don't know exactly, and it's not that significant, but the wise men uh, had to make preparations and then make that, that journey. But they come into Jerusalem, so they no doubt cause quite a stir. They're looking for the king of the Jews. Tragically, uh, uh, the Jews were not looking for the king of the Jews. So God brings Gentiles to seek him. Hallelujah. God will have his son honored by whoever will honor him. Uh, and uh, we can understand uh, why it was that Herod the king was disturbed because he doesn't want any competition. There's another king. But we cannot understand why it would say he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Why are they troubled? They're supposed to be waiting for their Messiah to come, the king. And now he's announced that he's coming and they're troubled. I think that they were so satisfied with their religious positions that they, like, like Herod, didn't want any competition. They didn't want anything changed. You know, you might go to some church, uh, move into town and go to a new church, and you've got some uh, different way of looking at things, and you find that people don't want to hear it because they like things just the way they are. You might say, but the Bible says, but people like their traditions. And so 
uh, here the, the Magi come in and they don't find anyone that can tell them where is where the king of the Jews was. You know, the answer they got, well, we don't know. And they're thinking, how can they not know? Now, there's something that we'll find in a moment that is quite significant. The star that appeared in the east was no longer leading them. And we'll see that in a moment. And that really adds depth to the story. So in verse uh, 4, And when he, Herod, had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So these men, these religious men, knew exactly where the king, where it was prophesied the king would be born. But none of them uh, uh, thought to, uh, to go to Jerusalem to see if what the Magi said was true because they knew where the king of the Jews was born. There's only one person that was concerned besides the wise men about where the king was born, and that's the man that wants to kill him. This man that's under satanic power and wants to kill him. And remember, this is a, a, a battle of light and darkness. The darkness is battling against the light, the light of the world that came into the world, Jesus Christ. And so we read in Revelation and uh, chapter 12 that, in fact, I'll just turn to it, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown uh, with 12 stars. And so here is Israel uh, depicted here, and she being with child, Try, uh, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. So this is a picture of Israel and, and uh, of course, uh, of Mary. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, heads and ten hordes and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the ground. And the dragon, listen to this, and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That's what we have with Herod. We have satanic powers waiting to destroy the Lord Jesus. Uh, this is uh, uh, just why uh, Caesar Augustus' decree was so significant. This was all inspired by the devil also, seeking uh, to, to destroy the Lord Jesus, to find him, to keep prophecy from being uh, revealed. And verse 5 it says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God into his throne. Now the scripture passes over his life and his death and resurrection because that's not the topic here. What God is looking at is from heaven and, and his, uh, the fulfillment of God's promises and purposes regarding Israel and regarding the Messiah. Uh, the enemy will not prevail, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the great prevailer, and it says that he was caught up to God and to his throne. And that's where he is now, praise the Lord. I wish Israel and the Jews knew that. And so, going back to Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 7, And then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Now see, I mean, this man... Uh, uh, this king is ruthless. Uh, he is seeking to find out where the child is and when was he born. Now, he's, uh, Herod had more uh, intellectual skill uh, than many of us that have the Bible today because he understood uh, that uh, the child had been born and he's trying to discern by listening to the wise men when they saw the star, because they know, he knows, when they saw the star, that was when the child was born. That was the significance of them seeing the star. And so he says here uh, in verse uh, 8, and he sent them to Bethlehem and it said, go and search diligently for the young child. When you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. So this is Herod, who is uh, like a, a, a sly fox who is, now he knows where the child was born, now he knows how old the child is, because the Magi have naturally trusted the king. Now we're going to find out why it is that they didn't go directly to Bethlehem to start with the Magi. Uh, here it is in verse uh, 9. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, 
till it came and stood over the place where the young child was. You see, the star had disappeared. We don't know if the star uh, appeared to them, and we don't know if the star was an angel, or, or uh, obviously uh, it was not a star like we know a star in the heavens because it's going to shine a light over the house, but, but it was a, a supernatural phenomenon. It, it could have been an angel. God was using Gabriel and uh, angels at that time, obviously, to convey the message of, of the birth of Christ, but whatever it was, the star evidently and obviously disappeared. So here are these wise men that are left on their own spiritual intuition to find where the king of the Jews was. And this as a word for us. God, he gives us direction as we need direction. And as we seek him, he'll give us a little more direction. Uh, but it's for those that seek him, they shall find him. So that star disappeared, and they evidently figured, the wise men, that the king of the Jews would be in the palace, or he would be in the temple. So they went to Jerusalem. And of course, uh, 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 God had purposes in that. He was giving testimony to Jerusalem that the king had been born. This is, this is phenomenal, because it was the Jews that were supposed to be giving testimony to the, to the Gentiles. And I guess we could say when they were taken into captivity into Babylon, they did that earlier on during the Babylonian captivity. But, but now, uh, specifically regarding the Messiah, it's the Gentiles bearing witness to the Jerusalem. And so they had to go to Jerusalem to announce the coming of the king, to give the Jews an opportunity, the nation Israel, opportunity uh, to seek the Lord with them. Tragically, they, they, they would not come. And you know, that's the way with religious people today. You might be excited uh, to search for the Lord, to know more and more of Him, to open your Bible and learn more of the Bible. You'll find that there'll be a lot of people that say they're Christians that are just satisfied and, and, and content to stay right where they are and not be troubled by any uh, further seeking of the Lord. They'll just say, yes, I know Him and, and I know the Bible but they never haven't, they haven't really heard uh, the voice of God in maybe many years or maybe never. And so these wise men, uh, they leave uh, according to the, this is incredible, the direction of a wicked king directs them to go to Bethlehem. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? God uses who he will just like he, he used Caesar Augustus to move Joseph and Mary down to Bethlehem. So now it's a three miles uh, for them to travel and on the way the star reappears. And they, it says, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Because here's the thing, they had traveled all this way, you know, three, five month journey, whatever it was. And, and there's a question mark. What, what happened to the star? Are we on the right track? Are, are we uh, really where we should be? Because we went to Jerusalem and no one knows anything about him. No one even knows he's born. Are we out of the will of God? And so God comes to them and gives confirmation to them. No, you're right in the center of my will. And, and God then leads them again directly to Bethlehem uh, and to the house where the Lord Jesus was. Praise the Lord. This is so wonderful and so incredible, so uh, applicable uh, to you and I and the way that God uses when he directs us in our pathway of faith. And I, I don't think I read verse 10. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. So now the star is leading them once again, takes them to the house where the Lord Jesus was. And when they were come into the house, verse 11, they come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is what they came to do. They came to worship him. They came to present gifts to him. And it's very fitting and very right that whenever we come before the Lord, we bring gifts, uh, not just to come before him and to ask for things. Oh, that's necessary also to cast our cares upon him, but to present to him our praises and our thanksgiving, as we read in Hebrews 13. Uh, so significant. We, uh, you know, Israel was to go to Jerusalem three times. There was three feasts that they were to appear. The men were to appear in Jerusalem, but never with empty hands. May God grant us that we don't have empty hands or empty hearts when we come before him. So they brought these gifts and they presented them unto him. And I just want you to think about the human situation here. 
uh, here are these great men. They've got the entourage, you know, their there's small army, uh, all their servants, and they, they come up to the home that is lit now supernaturally uh, by this uh, star uh, uh, from heaven. And uh, they are at the door of Joseph and Mary. And I don't know, you know, if Joseph and Mary came out, if they knocked on the door, but what an amazing thought. They open the door and they see these great men, obviously not men from, from uh, Israel, from Judea, but great men of the East and a large number of them. As we said earlier, maybe not three, maybe not 30, maybe 300, whatever it was, you know, because it was a big enough number that it stirred up, uh, made quite a stir in Jerusalem. So here's Joseph and Mary. And what did these men say? We, we've come from the East to worship him. I mean, what, how did they explain themselves? Because, you know, Joseph, the provider and protector of the Lord Jesus, he's not just going to let anyone in. He's the protector of this, of, the, of his son, you know, his, his adopted son. So whatever happens, they come in and the Lord Jesus is in the midst of these five, at least, you know, three presented gifts and Joseph and Mary. So he's in the midst as they worship him. And so what I love about this story is that this worship overflows into fellowship because it, it, Christ is in the center of these five, and, and at least five, and, and they're sharing their stories about him. The Magi telling how they got there about the star in the east and about all their preparations and all the things that went on. Maybe they described having learned about him in the scripture and numbers, whatever it was, they, they told their story. They told them their story of how uh, no one in Jerusalem had known him and how uh, Herod had sent them to Bethlehem. And it, it must have been wonderful. And then Joseph and Mary tell their story. You know, Mary, a virgin birth. That, that, and this is the incredible part, that Mary must have told those magi, the angel told me he's the son of God. Wow. Now these magi, are not just seeing the king of the Jews, but the very God of heaven, the son of God. This must have been so overwhelming to them. And, you know, so they, they, they fellowshiped together, but Christ is in the midst. So worship overflows and there's fellowship regarding the Lord Jesus. And remember, the worship was, was first and then the fellowship it's so important. You know, that's what builds the foundation of real fellowship is to worship together with other believers, to seek the Lord together. And uh, then, of course, uh, the Magi leave. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto their own country an another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And that's exactly what Herod did. And that's why we read uh, in verse uh, 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. You see, he understood that when that a star appeared to them, that was when the Lord was born. But they murdered these children. You know, so many times uh, we are just amazed at the ruthlessness, the ruthlessness of mankind, humanity, uh, uh, killing children in wars and the atrocities that take place. Uh, but you know, whether the death of a child uh, it's one year old or two years years old as Herod murdered these children, or whether it's the child in the womb, as we've seen uh, in the story with Elizabeth and 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 John the Baptist in her womb at six months, and and him leaping for joy at the presence of Mary and the Lord within her womb, uh, having just been uh, conceived by the Holy Ghost just a, a week or two before. Uh, it, it doesn't matter where it takes place, murder of children is an atrocity and a stain which is uh, whose blood is upon this nation. So when you think of this nation and all that we possess and the wealth and all that we have, you remember God will hold this nation to account. This is not a God-fearing nation. 
This is not a Christian nation. Those times are far past. This is a nation that is under God's judgment. And you can be sure of it. And as we continue on toward the end times, we will move further and further from God. Just as we have replaced Merry Christmas some time ago with Happy Holidays because we don't want to have Christ in there. So in this uh, new year, uh, we've replaced uh, A.D., the year of the Lord, uh, with C.E., the common era. Just to erase Christ, but you can't erase him. Because CE 2024 that we're going into is, is uh, AD. It's the year of the Lord. It's, it's 2024. It's the year of the Lord, the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Praise his name. So this wonderful story, how we need to seek the Lord in this new year. May God give us each grace to seek the Lord through the word of God to find more and more about our Lord Jesus, to know him more deeply and more deeply to love him more, to honor him more, that our obedience would be more perfect. In Jesus' name, amen. Our blessed God, thank you so uh, for the scriptures that lay out for us so wonderfully that you always have those that seek the Lord. These great men of the East uh, came to see the King of the Jews, announced it to Jerusalem. And may we be announcers that the King has come wherever we go as well this new year. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.